Okay, first things first. I'm sorry if there's a hum in the background. I have to run a fan. It got super humid outside today, and it's just, uh, yeah, yeah, so I got to try to keep the air circulating in here as best as I can. Um, anyway, uh, Backlash 2020 um, wrapped up, uh, give or take about a half an hour or so ago. Uh, had to get home. But, um, yeah, so let's see. Obviously, uh, this was punctuated by the greatest wrestling match ever, which uh, I'll get to it when I get to there. But uh, let's uh, start things off with our kickoff show match, which was the United States Championship match, Apollo Crews versus Andrade with Zelina Vega and Angel Garza. Uh, strange, because they're already doing the dissension between Garza and Andrade. And uh, on top of that, Kevin Owens came out to do commentary, uh, but to also kind of look out for Apollo Crews. Uh, early on, uh, Andrade uh, locked on a dragon sleeper over the top rope. Cruz fought back. He had an outside moonsault to the outside onto Garza, Andrade, and I believe even Selena Vega. I may be wrong on that. Uh, Andrade hit his double knees in the corner. Uh, Cruz dodged a double stomp attempt and hit a belly belly suplex. Andrade hit a DDT over the top rope. And Garza, at this point, uh, Garza interjected in the match trying to distract the referee. Uh, Owens pulled him off of the ring apron, hit the stunner, and that seemed to distract Cruz, but he recovered in time to hit his uh, back suplex into the power bomb for the three count of the victory, so Apollo Cruz retains. Uh, Apollo Cruz, sorry. And uh, not a terrible match, but kind of uh, very bog standard. Uh, I, I like the fact that Apollo is the champion now, because again, they're finally doing something with him. Like, if they. If they just do something with him, maybe something will work. Instead of just having him come out and say he's an incredible athlete. But uh, it seemed to work well. Um, I don't know exactly where they're going with this Andrade uh, thing. I'm, again, he's a guy who probably should be going after the big championship right now. But it seems there's a lot of guys going after that. So uh, I guess he's going to have to stick to the big card feuds for a while. And uh, moving on to the show proper, uh, we opened up with the triple threat match for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss and, uh, I'm sorry, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross and the Icon versus the Iconics. And the winner of this actually has a match on Wednesday uh, against Shaki, uh, Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox on NXT. Also, uh, Cole continues to play out the idea of a Bailey sasha breakup heading down the line. Uh, but even Graves himself is at this point saying, yeah, people have been talking about that for years and it hasn't happened. I'm on the point of actually giving up. So uh, kind of a unique point there. Um, they, this is one of those ones where all three teams are represented at the same time, which is actually my preferred version of the triple threat tag team match. Not the one where uh, another team could be tagged out, uh, just because I just find that stupid. Um, right off the bat, uh, Alexa Bliss distracted Billy Kay, allowing uh, Nikki Cross to get a cheap shot. Uh, Bliss blind tag and got a cheap shot on Sasha Banks after that. Uh, Sasha fought out of a gory bomb attempt from Peyton Royce and uh, got a victory roll. But uh, Sasha threw um, Nikki Cross in into a roundhouse kick from, I believe, uh, Peyton Royce. Uh, Billy Kay came in and landed a big boot to Nikki Cross. Uh, Bailey and Sasha hit a wheelbarrow knee strike on Billy Kay, but Cross broke up the pin count. She hit a bulldog clothesline on Bailey and Billy Kay. Peyton Royce hit a crossbody through the ropes onto Bliss and Banks and knocked them back into their uh, teammates. The Iconics hit the Magic Killer on Sasha Banks, but then Alexa Bliss interfered. She hit the Twisted Bliss on Peyton Royce, but then Sasha sneaked in and got a roll up for the three count of the victory. Uh, Bailey and Banks retain. Uh, I don't know where they were going with this. So again, if you want to start planting seats for that breakup, they maybe should have lost the championships, but then again, why did they win the championships so quickly? So yeah, this is kind of a mysterious thing. Again, not a bad match, but uh, it may be a little too predictable as with ha as happened with a lot of the matches on this show. Okay, our next match is Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. Uh, this was a uh, pretty standard Sheamus match. Uh, Sheamus uh, round Hardy's mat and uh, head into the mat a little bit. Uh, Sheamus rip, tried to rip off Hardy's top. Uh, she, uh, Hardy came back, he had dropped to the knee, uh, he had a cross body off of the ring steps. Sheamus came back, he had, um, no, he sort of cross-checked Hardy into the ring post, and then sent him to the ring steps. Sheamus hit a knee drop from the second rope. Uh, he started calling the crowd enablers as it's happening. 
Uh, Hardy came back in a back suplex, you know, jawbreaker, hit the whisper in the wind. Uh, Sheamus popped back, went for a broke kick, but Hardy dodged it and had a sling blade. Uh, Sheamus broke up a swanton bomb attempt, it had a white noise. Sheamus locked on a cloverleaf, Hardy fought out of it, they got to the outside. Uh, uh, Hardy threw Sheamus into the ring post and then hit the twist of fate and went for the swanton, but uh, Sheamus got his foot on the rope. And then they fought to the outside, Sheamus hit a big bro kick on Hardy who was coming off the ring barricade. He then got Hardy back in the ring and hit a second bro kick for the three count of the victory. A uh, bit of a surprise here, you would have thought they were building towards uh, Hardy getting the win and getting the leg up on the feud and maybe going on to feud with, say, AJ Styles for the Intercontinental Championship since that match did get to take place or uh, something like that. But um, no, um, Sheamus won, so I don't know where exactly they're going to go with this. Uh, unfortunately, I do think we're probably going to get more Hardy Sheamus matches in the future. So maybe not the best thing there. After that, we have the Raw Women's Tag Team match, Asuka versus Nia, not Raw Women's Tag Team match, Raw Women's Championship match, sorry, Asuka versus Nia Jax. Uh, boy, this was a, <laughs> boy, this was a kind of a turn of a match. Not through any of the performances, it just, it didn't really seem to work again. Asuka led off with a series of strikes, she attempted a Fujiwara armbar, she did a lock on an octopus hole at one point, Jax came back with a big clothesline, hit an avalanche splash, Jax hit a big, nasty-looking spine buster, locked on a cobra clutch, but Asuka modified that into a guillotine, but Jax fought out of that and, hit, and attempted a jackhammer. Like, it was supposed to be a jackhammer, and she fell, but she didn't quite get the whole rotation, and so it looked more like a really awkward brain buster. And Asuka managed to recover. She dodged a splash and hit a shining wizard for a two-count. Uh, Jax came back and hit a big power bomb. Uh, they got outside the ring. Asuka managed to lock on a cross arm breaker. Uh, they fought a bit more. They needed to beat the 10 count. Neither of them did, which resulted in a double count out. And then Asuka hit running hip attack off the apron. Yeah, so not a good match at all. Like, again, if especially since they're clearly trying to build towards Asuka Charlotte again. So I don't know why they didn't have Asuka just beat Nia Jax. Like, she's done it before. I don't think it would have hurt Nia any more than Nia's hurt herself in the last few well, years. So, yeah, it just didn't seem to make any much sense to me at all. So, yeah, this was just not a good match at all. Okay, our next match is the Universal Championship Handicap match. Braun Strowman versus the team of Miz and Morrison. Uh, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, uh, only one of... Uh, basically, the rules going into this was... Uh, Miz and Morrison had planned to kind of do like a simultaneous pin and get the championship, but the rules stated that only one of them was allowed to pin Braun Strowman to win. Uh, they opened up by doing their music video, which uh, they said was a premiere, even though it premiered already on the bump, and they even played it during the kickoff show, so yeah. Uh, also, uh, Michael Cole made a Billy Ocean reference. Timely. Um, again, this was also a handicap match where neither of the two guys was in the ring at the same time. They had to tag in, which again, sort of defeats the purpose of a handicap match in that scenario. Uh, Miz and Morrison did get a few uh, cheap shots, a couple, of, they had a double drop kick, a double DDT. Morrison had a series of flying kicks, uh, knocked Strowman out of the ring. Morrison hit uh, another series of kicks. Uh, eventually, th this culminated in them hitting a finisher that was a Skull crushing finale into kind of a double stomp type maneuver. And Morrison went for the pin because I think he was the legal guy. But then Miz suddenly broke the pin. And suddenly and Miz realized, oh no, what did I do? We had this thing won and I stupidly broke it up for some reason. And he immediately started apologizing to Morrison. That allowed Strowman to toss the Miz out of the ring and then hit the running power slam on Morrison for the three count of the victory. Um, yeah. <laughs> Again, a rather forgettable match, and uh, no appearance by The Fiend, so again, if you're expecting something for that, I guess not. So I guess we're going to get more Miz and Morrison versus Strowman. Are we going to get like a triple threat match now? Uh, I mean, the next show is Extreme Rules on July 19th, so yeah, not too enthusiastic about this storyline continuing either. And that takes us to our next match, which was the WWE Championship match, Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Lashley. Uh, right off the bat, even before the bell rang, La uh, Lashley locked McIntyre in the full Nelson. 
Uh, it took multiple officials to break it up. The match had not properly started yet. Uh, McIntyre still wanted to continue, so the bell rang. Immediately, uh, Lashley tossed McIntyre into the corner and just drove him into it. He had a big lariat. McIntyre fought back. He had a Northern Lights suplex. He clotheslined Lashley out of the ring. But then uh, there was a, set, a spot set up where uh, Lashley picked up uh, McIntyre on his shoulders, tried to fireman's carry, but he sort of stumbled and accidentally threw uh, McIntyre to the ground before. And he picked him up again and rammed him kind of shoulder first into the ring post. Uh, Lashley came back, he had a big spine buster. At that point, McIntyre kicked out at one. Uh, McIntyre belly to belly, uh, hit a belly to belly into the ring barricade. And uh, McIntyre hit a reverse Alabama slam. Lashley fought out, locked on a cross face. Mashley countered that into a Kaimura lock. Uh, McIntyre came back in a superplex, but then Lashley came back in a spear. McIntyre again kicked out at one. At this point, Lana came down to the ring and tried to distract the ref. Uh, MVP told her to get down. Lashley told her to get down. McIntyre semi shoved Lashley towards Lana, almost hitting her. And then when Lashley turned back around, he got the Glasgow kiss, sending him into Lana. And then uh, McIntyre hit the Claymore for the three count of the victory. Afterwards, Lashley just left with uh, MVP, and Lana got left behind again. So, uh, you know, this match was actually pretty good. Uh, I think the ending got a little cluttered. Like, I, I think you just need to leave Lana out of this. Like, if you're not going to do something where Lashley officially dumps her, and to have her run down to the ring just makes it really awkward and just seem really clunky. Like, he even MVP said, this thing was going Lashley's way. Uh, it was a good, it was a decently length match, but neither man was really blown up, so a lot of high impact moves, a lot of good stuff, so really intense action, and it kind of, you know, fell apart towards the end on that. Okay, our next match is the Raw Tag Team Championship match, the Street Profits versus the Viking Raiders, and this is the one to decide them all after their goofy athletic competitions. They've been going in to build up this, and it didn't technically start. So it was all this was all a pre-taped thing that they bumped into each other in the back uh, stage area, and they just started fighting. Uh, they inadvertently smashed Braun Strowman's car again, and then they got weapons including Ivar grabbing a bowling ball and the Street Profits getting golf clubs. And they started to try to fight each other, but then they're like, wait, 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 we shouldn't be doing this. We need to get into the ring. We need to, yeah, uh, have this out even squeak Steven. And they're like, yeah, you're right. They start trying to head to the ring, but then they get into another fight again. Uh, they brawl all the way to the outside area. Angela Dawkins spears Ivar through a glass door. Ivar starts fascinating, uh, fantasizing about I think it was turkey legs at this point. Oh, there were a lot of turkey leg references for some reason. Uh, anyway, they call. eventually, again, this was enough to get them to call another truce. At this point, a group of biker ninjas led by Akira Tozawa arrive, and so the teams unite and become the Viking Prophets to fight off the ninjas until a large African-American ninja with a sword shows up. Then they run off, and they run on top of a production truck, uh, the truce is broken again. They knock each other into a dumpster. At this point, they seem to call the truce on again. Ivar fantasizes about women calling him cute. Uh, the Aubrey, Aubrey, oh, what's her last name? Uh, the female referee pokes her head over the top of the dumpster and says, Guys, your match is supposed to be starting. And then they get attacked by a tentacle monster, and that's how it ends. <laughs> like, this would have been funny, but... I, one, I, I admittedly got up to go to the bathroom before the match started. I thought they were going to play the video vignette before that, but they didn't. So I didn't quite get all of it, and I'm still not entirely sure what the hell happened here. Like, this did not work at all. Like, I'm sure these people could have done it if they really... I, one, they announced this match just today. Like, maybe if they had had a bit more time to plot this thing out a little bit better, it could have worked. Or again, make it a stipulation match where they're fighting backstage instead of, you know, oh, even they just couldn't even make it to the ring. And, you know, the Biker Ninjas was uh, maybe, again, a little too over the top. So, yeah, it just, it really, really, really did not work at all. And, yeah, just, boy. Yeah, I think we know what the worst match of the night was, unfortunately. 
And now we finally reach the main event, the greatest wrestling match ever between Edge and Randy Orton that was presented with unique visions and camera angles. Uh, basically, they just mounted a bunch of GoPros on the ring posts, and uh, they, did, they did do a few trickerations, like they did a ceiling camera. They did, uh, when Edge and Orton actually tied up for the first time, they did kind of a ground-level thing. Like the, Again, this was pre-taped. Uh, it's kind of common knowledge that that happened. And as they were... And uh, before it started, they did. They even did a, a tribute to Howard Finkel, where they dropped down the old Madison Square Garden microphone and then played audio of Finkel introducing Edge and Orton. So yeah, it actually worked. And also, uh, Charles Robinson was in more of an old school referee uniform instead of the uh, the striped shirt. It was the just the dress shirt and the bow tie. So uh, kind of unique in there. Um, Right off the bat, Edge hit a series of arm drags, but then Orton faked him out. There's a lot of Orton kind of faking Edge out on things like, oh, I'm going to do up. Oh, no, I'm going to stop. <laughs> and you know, you're going to fall flat on your back. Orton uh, locked on a figure four head scissors. Uh, Edge sent Orton out of the ring at one point, um, hit a headbutt to knock him down. He then hit a uh, flying clothesline. And Edge locked on a crossface after that. Uh, Orton fought back and tried on an RKO. Edge locked on his uh, inverted Cobra Clutch finisher they call the Anti-Venom. Um, Orton slammed Edge off the ring steps, off the table. He had a back suplex on the announce table. Uh, at one point, Orton started to do the Eddie Guerrero three uh, Amigo suplexes. And before he did that, he actually looked to the heavens, which I can't help but find just a tiny bit ironic, given that uh, Orton famously in a feud said Eddie was in hell. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, or Edge fought back. He hit the trip, uh, three amigos of his own. Edge used the ropes in a Pele kick. Uh, he hit the implant DDT. Edge came back. He hit a knee strike, a couple knee strikes, and an elbow. Uh, Edge locked on another crossface. Orton fought out of that. And hit an Olympic slam or an angle slam. Orton hit his hangman DDT. Edge countered an RKO into the edge matic He countered another RKO into the um, prettier. Orton then came back. He hit the uh, pedigree, uh, Triple H's finisher. And um, then, basically, Edge hit a rock bottom. Orton came back with a big European uppercut. Orton fought out of a roll-up and hit an RKO, but Edge managed to kick out. Orton went for a punt kick. Edge hit two spears out of that. Uh, Orton came back, hit an RKO out of a cross-body attempt. Um, Edge started to go for another spear, but instead elected to lock on the anti-venom again. And, unfortunately, in the process, uh, Robinson got knocked back a little bit, and Orton got in a cheap low blow and followed that through with a punt kick for the three count of the victory. Um, Orton wins. Afterwards, he told Edge, I told you so. Now go home. Go home. A stretcher came out for Edge, but he refused to be carried off. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. And that's how it ended. Uh... Overall, it was an entertaining match. It was a great, straight-up, old-school wrestling match. I don't even mind that Orton cheated to win, because I think you had to go to that. I mean, Orton wasn't going to win this clean, because he's a heel. And again, in an old-school fashion, yeah, a sneaky low blow is the way you would win that. So, um, I don't know if this is the final <laughs> Edge and Orton match. I do see Orton's probably going to get a title shot, either at Extreme Rules or SummerSlam. My best bet is probably Extreme Rules because uh, they're probably ruining Lesnar to appear at SummerSlam, so uh, that's my best guess on there. Anyway, they did deliver on a great wrestling match, but unfortunately hyping up as the greatest wrestling match ever was probably putting way too much weight on its shoulders, so... Yeah, um, it, it was not the greatest wrestling match ever. It was a great wrestling match, though. It was enjoyable. But, you know, the show overall... Yeah, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't really tech. It wasn't good either. Uh, it was pretty middle of the road. Again, a lot of the matches were pretty predictable. Uh, certain matches that started out good kind of got muddled finishes. Uh, other stuff that again just kind of felt really lazy and half done. And of course, the Street Profits tag match, which could have been bonkers, but it just yeah, it kind of fell flat too. So yeah. Um, I don't want to bake too much on the show since, again, most of the matches were at least decent, but just not spectacular. The final match was a really good match. It was a really well done match. So, 
I am going to give Backlash 2020 a C. Uh, it's, yeah, definitely middle of the road, I think, overall for the show. Um, the Orton Edge match was great, but like I said. Okay, so. Oh, all right. The uh, next video should be the review of a Netflix movie called The Lost Bullet. I think it's French. So, yeah. And yeah, I know there's a, a movie getting released this weekend, uh, the Kevin Bacon, Amanda Seyfried one, but um, just not really in the position to get to that right now. So, uh, <laughs> uh, The Lost Bullet's going to be the next film review. Uh, then, no film review the week after that. Uh, next wrestling review, I'm, I intend to do Firefest because um, right now I don't know what my film review... I, I don't think I'm going to get too much film reviews in July, so if I could do a few extra wrestling shows, it probably wouldn't be too bad. So I'll do uh, both nights of Firefest, which are on the uh, 1st and 8th of July, and then, of course, uh, Extreme Rules, which is on the 19th. So see you all next time. Uh, okay, so just a quick note here as I end, I check my phone for something, uh, and apparently Edge uh, suffered a torn triceps during this uh, final match, so uh, I guess he's going to be on the shelf for a while, so I guess we're not getting any more Edge or Norton stuff. Uh, again, see you all next time. guys, remember to check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions where you can help me expand my wrestling coverage to stuff beyond WWE, NXT, and the occasional AEW free show.